Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel, or hi, my name is Stacy. if you're new here. So for today's video, I wanted to do something a little bit different, and basically I wanted to revisit a bunch of old makeup that I haven't used in a while, because as much as I love using new products, I also like appreciating like what I already have in my collection and trying to use up the stuff that I have, because it's easy to get caught up in all the new releases and things like that. But before we get into it, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe if you want to see more content like this. And yeah, we'll just go right into the video. Okay, so first we're gonna start with our base. I'm gonna use the NARS Natural Radiant Longwear Foundation. I haven't used this in a long time and it's like a classic foundation, so I figured I should pull it back out. And this is in the shade Deauville. Also, I have two little guests with me today. They're matching too. They're twins. So yeah, just if you see them, please just ignore them, thanks. <laughs> so just put a pump on my hand. So I haven't used this foundation in a while because I've recently just been into more lighter coverage foundations and this is relatively full coverage. In general, I really like this foundation. It's very like creamy full coverage, I feel like. Like it's not too matte and drying, at least not on my skin type. I've heard other YouTubers with dry skin really like this too though. Okay, so as you can see, that was pretty full coverage, but you can still see like my bigger zits and things, but it overall like blanked out my face. And the finish is, I'd say like a natural matte, like it's more on the satin matte side, but it's not like a flat matte and it doesn't completely dry down like some other matte foundations. So far, I really like it. Okay, next I'm going to use this Becca under eye brightening thing. What's it called? This Becca Under Eye Brightening Corrector. So I initially bought this because of Samantha Rabindal. It looks like this. It's just like a peachy pinky shade and because I have dark circles. So, so yeah, I haven't used this in forever just because I put it away and then kind of forgot about it. But we'll see if it helps with the dark circles. So I'll just tap some in here. So I don't know if you can tell, but it's pretty dewy, like it adds a glow compared to this one. I wonder if you can see a difference between the two. Okay, it definitely does look brighter. And with this product, you definitely don't want to add too much. Just because I'm also going to add concealer on top. And if you add too much, it can start to look cakey and crease, I think. And I like using my finger to tap it in because I feel like it melts product in the most and is like the thinnest application. Okay, so what do we think? Did that brighten? I feel like it looks brighter, actually. Oh yeah, and I heard that they have come out with more shades of this. It's being sold by Smashbox now instead of Becca since they are going out of business. So anyway, moving on, we're gonna use the Too Faced Born This Way Multi-Use Sculpting Concealer. Okay, so I haven't used this in a while. It's definitely like a lot of people's holy grails, but my holy grail is the Tarte Shape Tape. So that's why I kind of haven't used this in a while, but kind of want to see how it compares again, because I forgot. This is supposed to be a really good full coverage concealer. I feel like most people, their holy grail is either like this one or the Tarte Shape Tape, so let me know in the comments which one you prefer, but. I do like that this one has like a longer setting time, like cause the Tarte one, you have to blend it pretty much as soon as you put it on your face. Cause it's like a matte concealer. Whereas this one I'd say is a more like natural finish. So if you have drier skin, you might like this more. I just find that the Tarte has the most smoothing effect under my under eyes and creases the least, which is why it's like my holy grail. But we'll see how this one holds up. I think upon initial application, I like this one too. Oh yeah, and the Tarte is more full coverage, which just kind of depends on what you want from your concealer. Ooh, I feel like that covered pretty well. Okay, I really like how my face looks so far. It's very like concealed, but you can see that there's still a little bit of glow left in my skin and it's not like a flat matte. So I really like that. Okay, so next before we go in with powders, I want to use this Marc Jacob Dew Drops, I think it's called. And this is in the shade Do You. I bought this also because of Samantha Ravindal's recommendation because she used to rave about these, but I haven't used this in a while. Mostly because the shade, as you can see, it's quite gold. And I think I prefer more like champagne or like skin tone shades. I just pumped some on my hand first. I'll rub it out on my hand. This is what it looks like. Ooh, it's like a creamy consistency. So I'm just gonna tap this. Ooh, I think I put too much. 
I'm just gonna tap this along my cheekbones. So I'm putting this before I put powder because I don't wanna mess up the powder. I think this is a formula where if you're not too careful, it will pick up powder underneath. I think I like it better blending out with a beauty blender. And you can pick it up off your hand and then just tap it in. So this is a very pretty formula. I feel like it gives a very similar effect to a lot of other more natural highlighters such as the Charlotte Tilbury like flawless filter, Hollywood flawless filter or like the Auric Glow Lust and things like that. It also even reminds me kind of like the finish kind of reminds me of the Rare Beauty highlighters. Like it's a very natural glowy finish that's kind of it's undetectable on the skin. The only thing that is detectable is that it's quite gold so it's not gonna look as natural as a like skin tone shade highlighter. But I mean, if you like gold highlighters, this is a really nice one. I think that's my only gripe with this is the shade. But other than that, it's really nice. And like the texture is really smooth. Okay, so the next product I'm gonna use is the Fenty Bronzer, Sunstalker Bronzer in the shade Inda Sun. Looks like this. It's the lightest powder shade. And I just haven't used powder bronzer in like a long time just because I've been super into creams. So I figured I'd dig back into this. I used it quite a bit as you can see. But yeah, I haven't used it in a long time and I haven't used powder bronzer in a long time. So we'll see how this looks. I'm just gonna lightly. So I like that it's actually blending out very easily. This is on an unset base because I try not to powder except in my T-zone because I like the more dewy natural look. Okay, I really like the shade of that. It's definitely a bronzer though because I've been used to just using contour, which is like cool tone. This is definitely warm toned, at least on my skin tone, but I like the depth of it like it's very light which is good for fair skin because it won't show up too orange or too intense like I built this up to this color it's like a very buildable formula which I like okay, also I'm not satisfied with how my zits are being covered up so I'm going to put some more concealer on with the Too Faced Born this way okay I'm gonna I'm just gonna leave them there to set for a while so I'm gonna look kind of ridiculous but that's the best way to get like the maximum amount of coverage from your concealer is to like just let it set and then blend it out when it's basically almost dry. So we're gonna wait on that. Okay, the next product I'm gonna go into is a oldie but a goodie. It's the Anastasia Brow Wiz. I remember like everyone, this is all anyone would ever use I feel like back in like 2016 or something. So <laughs> I have mine in the shape taupe. I haven't used this in a while because I've been just going for tinted brow gels on the daily just because I feel like they're so much faster. But in the end, I like the look that this one gives more. I feel like I used to care about my brows so much in like high school when I first like discovered how to do brows. Thick overdrawn brows were like a huge trend when I was in high school. Like, you know how in the 90s it was like the really thin pencil brow, but like I was born in the 90s, so that didn't apply to me. But in my time, back in the day, it was like those really thick, super dark concealer outlined brows that were just too much, I feel like. And nobody ever told me that my brows were too dark. Like, <laughs> well, actually, no, my mom did. My mom's a real one, but it's like you can't tell in the moment. Like only looking back at my old pictures, I'm like, wow, my brows were like way too dark. In the moment, I would like look at them and be like, they look fine to me. It's just crazy how like beauty trends come and go, you know? I feel like with my brows, because they're relatively thick, it's easy for me to like overdraw them and like make them too dark for my face, I feel like. Also, I used to be a super like perfectionist about my eyebrows, like I needed them to be exactly even. So then I would take like half an hour to do my brows every morning, but brows are meant to be sisters, not twins. Or sometimes they're just distantly related cousins and that's fine too. We're just gonna go in with the Benefit 24 hour brow setter. I have a free sample. I think I got a free sample from like Sephora or something. I actually really like this. It like completely sets down your brows. But I will say though, if you don't like the crunchy brow thing, you're not gonna like this because it makes your brows very hard. <laughs> like if you were to feel them. But I feel like like no one's gonna feel your brows. So like, does it really matter? I don't know. I also like that I feel like it defines every brow hair. So it makes your brows look more feathery, which I like. That's kind of in trend right now. I like feathery brows, but I don't like the kind where it's like they stick straight up and look spiky, you know? I just like it where the brow hairs are like defined and brushed up. Okay, so now it's been a while and I'm gonna try to blend out my little zit concealed spots. Okay, I'm gonna clean up the bronzer kind of. Okay, so this one is covered up more, but this one is still, the redness is still showing through, which I don't like, but we're just gonna leave it like that. 
because the more you put on, the more cakey it's gonna look. And I feel like that's kind of the maximum coverage that's gonna happen today. Okay, so now I wanna go into a quad that I haven't used in a while and I'm actually pretty excited to pull this back out. It's the Rowan quad. It looks like this. So there's four cream shadows. So I'm going for a warm tone look today. I'm gonna go in with the shade Nikki Dust, I think. It's the shade right here. So these cream shadows are like kind of stiff. They used to be sold at Sephora too, but I don't think that they're at Sephora anymore because that's where I bought them. So yeah, they're like a stiff cream that you have to like warm up as you can see. And they're very dimensional too. Like it kind of has a cool shift to it. It's like a bronzy color. So I'm just gonna put this all over my eyelid. So the whole aesthetic of the Rowan quads is supposed to be like cool girl makeup. It's supposed to be like easy to put on with your finger and kind of has like a smudgy look when blended out. It's supposed to look as if like your makeup is a little bit worn in. It's kind of the vibe of these shadows. But I like how it's super shimmery. Like they have lots of micro glitters in them. And because the creamy formula, it just makes your eyes look wet, but it's still more opaque than glitter toppers. So yeah, it's like a very unique formula, which I like. I just haven't played with these in a while. So yeah, you can see I just messily put it on, but then I'm going to you just use a blending brush and blend out the edges. So yeah, I really like how, you can see how that just blended really easily. So I'm gonna go in with the shade FaceTime, I think. It's this bronzy shade right here. So it looks really similar to Nikki Dust in the pan, but I think it's slightly darker and more gold, whereas Nikki Dust is slightly more cool toned or has like a redder, pinker tone to it. Yeah, see this is more goldy bronze. It's like warmer, whereas this one you can tell it has some pink to it almost. I'm just gonna add this to the outer corner. Okay, definitely with these quads, you're not gonna get that much depth, but that's not really the point. Like these are meant more for, it's kind of like finger painting, I guess. It gives a more watercolor effect. You're definitely not gonna get like a very structured eye look, especially cause all of them have shimmer in it. Oh yeah, that's the other thing. It has no mattes. But for me, that's not a problem. I like an all shimmer eye. Okay, I'm gonna use some of this. This is like the orangey copper shade called J'adore. This one right here, kind of matches my nails. But yeah, I'm usually not into like orangey shades. I'm just not that much of a warm tone gal, like in terms of colors I like. I mean, I like them occasionally, but they're not my color of choice. But I figured for today's video, since we are revisiting things I haven't used in a while, I would also make a warm toned look because I normally don't do those. I definitely warmed up the eyeshadow by a lot. Okay, and last thing I'm gonna go into the obviously shade. It's this gold bright gold one. And this shade in the palette is usually the most like flaky and it's quite thick too. Like it has more texture than the other ones, but it's like the brightest. I usually like to add it in the center. Yeah, you can see it kind of, well, made it more gold and it gave it like more of a pop. Yeah, it gives it more like textured effect. Okay, I think I put more on this eye because you can see like the flakes. Uh, I guess I'm gonna even it out a little. That's the eyeshadow all finished. So yeah, it gives a very glistening, wet look to the eyes, which I really like. I'm gonna curl my lashes and put on some mascara. I'll be right back after I curl my lashes. Okay, so I'm gonna use the Too Faced Better Than Sex Mascara. Looks like this. And it's the waterproof version, so it has like little water droplets on it. But anyway, so this used to be my Holy Grail mascara. And like anytime throughout high school or, or like early college, when people would ask me like what I was wearing on my lashes, it would be this. But then I switched over to the L'Oreal Lash Paradise, which is like a drugstore. It's like it's supposed to be a drugstore dupe of this. Cause I figured I didn't want to be spending like 20, I think it's like 20 something dollars on my mascara anymore. And also I noticed that I think that this flakes occasionally, which is like kind of annoying for a high-end mascara. But I do remember that like, I really like the way that this made my lashes look. So we'll see. And we'll also see if it flakes or not, because I just haven't worn this ever since I started wearing the L'Oreal Lash Paradise. Okay, so that's one eye done, and you can see the difference. Like, she's dramatic. I do really do like the way that it makes my lashes look though. I was saying like it's dramatic, but it still gives like a feathery look to the lashes. Okay, so I'm gonna do the other eye to even it out, and then I'll be right back. Okay, so I'm back with both the lashes done. 
I really like how this mascara makes my eyelashes look like they kind of look like falsies but yeah we'll see how it lasts because I'm pretty sure that was the problem I had the last time I wore it was that like it was like flaking and smudging a little we'll see about the longevity in terms of looks it's a really nice mascara okay so next i want to use this stila kitten karma i think it's called the glitter and glow so these used to be super popular they were like probably the most popular glitter liquid eyeshadow and i mean i think the formula was great hopefully this isn't dry because i haven't used it in a long time okay so it is a little bit dry but i added some of my inglot duraline to like re-wet it so i think it's gonna work hopefully. So I just want to put some on my lower lash line. I used to do this all the time. You can see it gives a little like teary-eyed effect. It's very cute. So you can see like the little glittery effect. Now we're gonna go into blush, which is my favorite. So I'm gonna take the Clinique um, Cheek Pop Blush Pop in the shade Nude Pop. That's a lot of pops. But yeah, so basically it's this nudie brown shade and it's very light but i haven't used this in forever since i got it like this was really popular probably like years and years ago i really like this formula because it's very buildable like it's super hard pressed because it doesn't like the flower doesn't disappear and i really like this color too i feel like it's a perfect nude for light skin tones definitely on the warmer side though like a warm peachy nude i really like these types of kind of like baked gelée blushes i don't know if it's actually the baked gelée or not but it's like the same type of formula because they're not too powdery so they don't like flatten your skin out that much compared to other powders and i like that this color is very light so i can just put it all over without worrying that it's too heavy all right so yeah this is definitely still a fave also you can see that it keeps the glow from that marc jacobs um highlighter that we had earlier it doesn't like mattify at all and then i also want to use another classic blush which is the nars blushes like these are iconic nars is like known for its blushes and this is in the shade dolce vita so i wanted to add like a little bit more of a pop because this is like too nude for me right now i just am really into like a blushy look so i'm just gonna add some of this and i haven't used this in a while either this is a kind of darker rose shade yeah i really like this shade for fall since it is pretty pigmented and So yeah, you can see it added like a pop. Yeah, you can see the difference. I think that's also why I haven't been using it because it's a bit deep for me. So it's hard for me to use it without looking like I got punched. Like, this is already a little bit, she's building up quickly. Like I think the NARS blush formula is pretty good, but I feel like it's not super unique, but maybe because they were the OGs. So I feel like it takes a lot for me to be wowed by a powder blush, but I think what's really impressive to me is when a powder blush isn't super powdery. Since I've been into the glowy skin look, I don't, I never want my powder blushes to completely flatten my face. But yeah, both of these blushes I really like. And I really like that combination too, because you can see the nude blush on the outskirts, but then like the little pop of like the deeper rose color on the apples. I'm gonna add some of this Becca highlighter. I know these are like, this is such a throwback. And this is in the shade Moonstone. I used to have the shade Champagne Pop because that was like the one that everyone went crazy over. I feel like that one's too dark for my skin tone because everyone was like, oh, it's such a universal highlighter. Um, there is rarely a time when something is like completely universal, you know what I mean? But anyway, I digress. So I'm just gonna tap some on. I don't think we needed another highlighter, but I figured since I'm adding powders, which I haven't been doing. I might as well add a powder highlighter because I haven't used this in a while. But yeah, that is a blinding highlight. Okay, I think I'm gonna dab that down because I don't like it when my highlight looks too unnatural. I want it to look like theoretically, my skin is just fat, glowy, theoretically. Like I don't want it to be like, oh yeah, she's definitely wearing highlight. I'm just adding some to even it out because the other side was way too much but yeah like i love how that looks okay that one this one still needs to calm down okay whatever we're just gonna accept the fact that they're probably not gonna be even but yeah i like that it doesn't look powdery at all it just is a very strong strong for me highlight 
This is definitely for people who like, you want to wear highlight that looks like wearing highlight. That's not like a bad thing. It's just, it's definitely stronger than what I've been wearing. So I'm not like used to it, but I think it's very pretty actually. Like the band, like I turn my head and you're blinded. Yeah, so I really like that highlighter actually for a powder. It looks very seamless and it actually like blends into the skin. So anyway, lastly, we're gonna go in with the lips. So I'm just gonna use my ColourPop lip liner in the shade Little One. Looks like this. So now we're gonna go in with another classic, which is MAC Velvet Teddy. Looks like this. And I haven't used this lipstick in a while. And to be honest, it's probably expired, but it smells perfectly fine and looks perfectly fine. So I'm just gonna keep using it, even though it's a little bit sus, not gonna lie. I actually really like it. Like, cause I kind of forgot what the exact shade of it was cause I haven't worn it in a long time, but I actually really like it. It's a little bit pinker than I remembered. Like I thought it was a warmer nude, but it looks quite pink on me. It's a super pretty shade. And I like that it's not as warm as I thought. Cause I also have the MAC Powder Kiss lipstick in the shade Teddy 2.0. So it's like supposed to be the same color or like a similar color, but this one is definitely, Teddy 2.0 is definitely warmer. Like it has a more warm undertone. Oh yeah, you can kind of see. Like this is 2.0 and this is Teddy. So yeah, definitely pinker. Moving on to another classic, it's the Fenty Gloss Balm in the shade Fenty Glow. So the thing is, I haven't worn this in a long time. And obviously it's like a fan favorite of like everybody who owns lip gloss. Every person who likes lip gloss has this gloss, you know what I mean? I love this smell. Like I love that it's not a typical vanilla smell that basically all American brands use. It's much more like fruity. It's like a fruit candy smell, which I really like. I'm really not into like the vanilla cupcake smell that most American lipstick brands use. It's just like too sweet and I'm not super into sweets. So yeah, this is what the lip gloss looks like on top of Velvet Teddy. But yeah, I really like that lip combo and this gloss is super lush. It makes my lips look super juicy, but it's also like not sticky. It's very comfortable for a gloss, which obviously it's why it's part of why it's so popular. And lastly, I'm going to use my Urban Decay All Nighter Setting Spray. Looks like this. I have the mini size and I just want to use it up. And yeah, I haven't used this in a long time because it was like almost done, but then I never finished it. So it's like, I have to like finish it obviously and not waste it. So I'm just gonna... Okay, I really don't like the spray on this. It kind of like spat all over my face, which is not cute. Yeah, we're just gonna fan. I'm just gonna take my hair clips out and fix my hair a little bit, and then I'll be right back for my final thoughts. Okay, so I'm back with everything mostly fixed. So I guess to recap, we'll go over the NARS Natural Radiant Longwear Foundation. Still excellent. It's a more medium to full coverage. I'd say it's like a satin matte finish. I think it's really good. Like it's a lot of people's holy grails, which I can see why. And it is one of my favorites. It's just because I haven't been wearing like more fuller coverage foundations recently. So I haven't been reaching for it, but definitely like if I want to go out or something, I would reach for this. The next we have the Too Faced Born This Way Multi-Use Sculpting Concealer. I mean, I like this concealer, but I feel like it will never replace my Tarte Shape Tape. It doesn't smooth my under eyes as much as the Tarte one does, I think. But so far it's so good. It hasn't emphasized any of my under eye wrinkles because I do have a few fine lines there and concealer definitely settles into those lines like by the end of the day. So I'll have to see, I'll have to continue testing that out. But yeah, otherwise it's a really nice concealer. I like that it's creamy and gives pretty full coverage, but it's not as full coverage as the Tarte. I would say it's probably the best full coverage concealer for drier skin types, but since I have an oilier skin type, I don't know if it's the best for me. Okay, moving on to the Fenty Bronzer in the shade Indus Sun. I really like it. It is more warm toned than I remembered and also than I'm used to, I think. I've been using the Fenty really cool toned um, amber matchsticks. So it's like pretty much gray. But yeah, honestly, this is a great bronzer for lighter skin tones, especially this shade. And I like that the shade range is really good and it's very blendable. It's not too powdery. It's very hard pressed, which I think is a good thing. The Clinique and the NARS blushes really like them. They're classic formulas and they don't disappoint. Like both of them are not too powdery. They don't kick up and they don't make your face look 
like a flat matte which is like one of the key things i look for in a powder blush but at the same time it is like very blurring to the skin and doesn't emphasize texture which is great and then as for highlighters we have the marc jacobs dew drops Really like this great formula. It gives a very natural glow. The only thing is I don't particularly like this shade, but if you like gold highlighters and you like liquid highlighters, this is a definite yes. Same with the Becca. I mean, it's a classic and I feel like most people have this, but if you don't, it is very, I'd say it's very blinding, but it's a buildable formula. So if you add only a little bit, it actually can look very natural. It just like melted into my skin and doesn't look like a stripe of highlighter, which is really easy for a powder highlighter to do. So I feel like this is a really impressive powder highlighter, probably one of the best in my opinion. The Becca Under Eye Corrector. I like that there's more shades out now so more people can use it. Um, as for the brightening, I think it definitely did brighten, but I don't know if there's that much of a noticeable difference between when I use this versus when I don't and just put on like a full coverage concealer. So I think that's why I kind of like fell out of using it just cause I feel like there wasn't that much of a difference. Oh yeah, the Anastasia Brow Wiz, I mean, it's a classic. I really like that. I think it has a stiffer texture, which I like because it's harder to make your eyebrows look too dark. And I like the spoolie at the end. It's pretty small and useful. And I also like just how tiny the pen is. It makes it really easy to be precise. So next, oh yeah, the Too Faced Waterproof Better Than Sex Mascara. Honestly, it's really good. Like you can see, it made my lashes look both volumized and lengthened, but they look kind of like feathery and fluffy. They're not clumpy at all, which I like. We have the Rowan Quad. I really like how my eyeshadow came out today. Like it looks just super wet. It also looks like I didn't try that hard, you know what I mean? Cause I just like used my fingers and just painted it on, but it's still very pretty and is very impactful. Oh yeah, also the Stila Glitter and Glow in the shade Kitten Karma. So my only problem with this is that it dries out really fast. Like as you can see, it was already dry, and but I haven't used it in a few months. So that's probably why, but still, I think it's it's doable if you have something like the Inglot Duraline because then you can just revive it whenever because that's what I do. Cause I have quite a few of those glitter and glows like saved up. But um, yeah, you can see it on my bottom lash line there. And I really like that it gives a kind of effect that my eyes are like glistening. And then lastly, my little lip combo, which was the MAC Velvet Teddy with the Fenty Gloss Balm in the shade Fenty Glow. I mean, both of these are iconic lip products and they definitely did not disappoint, but I really like the colors. Like, cause I haven't used them in a while, so I forgot like the exact tone. But honestly, like these are super flattering on my skin tone. And I'm like, why haven't I been using it more? And I also forgot like the MAC, just classic matte formula, which is what Velvet Teddy is. And it wasn't drying at all before I put the gloss on. I just like having a moisturizing like lip gloss. And the Fenty Gloss Balm, the formula is like the perfect gloss formula. Super glass-like but feels like a lip balm almost. So that's about all I have for today. I really hope you enjoyed this video and found it helpful. Don't forget to thumbs up this video if you liked it and don't forget to comment and subscribe if you wanna see more content like this. And yeah, I'll see you all in my next video. Bye.